So regarding your attachments, things that are harder to let go of, there's all kinds of ways and techniques that you can shift that, but it always comes down to, as I said yesterday, and I've said in many meetings before, and we'll address it again today because it's important. It depends on, if it's successful or not, it depends on whether you perceive more benefit in the alternative choice than in the idea that you're holding on to, or the reality or concept or what you perceive you can get out of that which you're attached to. That needs to be loosened up in order for that to be space for you to be willing to move into a new direction that otherwise would scare you. The only reason the black hole or or even merging with God scares you is because you have the all you know is what you know and so obviously that contains your greatest pain but it also contains your greatest joy and your greatest pleasure and satisfaction. Um, the only reason that I'm teaching this is because uh, it, it, it offers deeper satisfaction than anything else that I found. It doesn't necessarily make life always more fun or more the conventional sense of, of happy or good, but there's just a satisfaction and a connection that's not possible within the regular realm of pleasure and pain and sense organs and validation and all that stuff. So it takes, it does take a little bit of courage to transcend the human domain as your main sort of TV channel, what you're watching. You know, you're always watching something. You're always tuned into some channel. And if you're used to the bold and the beautiful for 40, 50 years, which I believe that's how long they've been going. As the world turns, it's probably 65 years by now, no? So if that's been your channel this whole time, it's kind of challenging to tune to a different channel. Just because it's all you know. And, you know, we're creatures of habit. We shape our brain. The plasticity of our brain will shape itself around whatever we constantly repeat. So that's a constant um, fix of a particular combination of nerve endings firing up that we get used to as our reality. And even though it's all holographic and, and empty of any independent existence, all that appears still offers us the illusion of it being real and repeated enough times and you'll become dependent on it. So it does take a little bit of courage from that point of view. Now, when you begin to shift your attachment by realizing that there's greater benefit in whatever the optional or the alternative choice is, when you do this more often than not, it becomes easier. Something starts to happen. You begin to develop, build up your level of faith. And this is really crucial for any adapt. It's to build up their level of faith, both for their inner journey their meditations, their capacity to focus and persevere and proceed and surrender and continue without getting caught in complaints or stories or challenges. But also it's crucial for the way that you'll be handling or dealing with or reflections that you might need to handle in the conventional realm, the conventional illusion, the world, as people call it. So if you don't have high levels of faith, then you'll actually sell out on your inner journey because of outer reflections. Do you know what I mean? Does this make sense? Like um, even simple things like people just questioning, like the questioner yesterday that said she felt a pull to like make a radical move and her family was questioning her and um, those kinds of examples. You will easily sell out on your inner journey if you have not developed high levels of faith so that you can withstand the impact of things from your outer life being um, rip, ripped apart or ridiculed or taken away or threatened or whatever it might be. So 
if we were in a full-fledged fourth density reality, that wouldn't be necessary. But we are here, which is a different vibration. It's not fully developed yet in that density. And so there isn't a whole lot of transparency and love and compassion and understanding and being able to see past the surface of things and being actually able to see another self and understand them and which are qualities of fourth density, third density. We are all veiled, which explains why everyone is so skeptical, so realistic, so judgmental, and so um, envious of one another, and so afraid of the unknown, is because literally all we have is what we know. Whereas in fourth density, we have way more access to what we don't know yet. So there's much more of a malleability, um, a body, an ocean of information that makes it easier to shift, that makes it less threatening, less frightening. No, this is still the outer world, um, as I would call it from the more absolute points of view. But then the outer world is more reflective of. The higher the density, the more reflective that outer expression is of the inner journey of involution. So since we're here, you'll need high levels of faith, which actually, um, as Ra says, is one of the two main things that you came here to teach and learn is love and faith. Because of the veil, it is possible to accelerate greatly the journey of your soul, not even just your person. That's one thing. At some point you begin to communicate, have direct intuitive knowledge of what you are at a higher density level. And you'll begin to contribute to that. It's like you're carrying water, buckets of water to your higher self, buckets of information, of learning, of experience. And you realize that this is just a vessel for learning, for transforming, for growing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even people that are considered um, to teach enlightenment, a lot of it is still about dealing with the human psyche. And it does need to be dealt with, um, but in my opinion, they often lack the capacity to move on uh, to to a greater understanding, a greater relative understanding of more holistic understanding of what makes up an entity. Instead of looking at an entity and seeing a psychological creature, you will see a spiritual being with great complexity, um, intrinsic blueprints that can never be explained or translated by modern science or psychology or psychiatry. So you become in awe of yourself and you become in awe of others because you start to transcend the veil, at least intuitively. It doesn't necessarily mean you suddenly see all your past lives as clearly as you see your hand, but it means that you have this intuitive body of information backing you up that you're connected to. So understand that, yes, it's about knowing yourself and accepting yourself, but that's usually where spirituality on earth ends. The third step, as Ra states, is become the creator. It doesn't say become human. It doesn't say be a balanced human being. It says become the creator. It's another type of journey. The first two steps are very relatable. Everyone can relate to this. You have to know what arises, why it arises, know yourself, know your patterns, know your thoughts, know your emotions, know your beliefs. Then accept your thoughts and your emotions and your beliefs and where you're at. The only way to to quote-unquote kill the ego is to love it to death. So you have to accept it. You have to love those tendencies to death. Not by wanting to kill it, but by accepting it. You know? And occasionally resistance can work uh, because it can spark this great mode of discipline that you haven't had before, this great act of will. And out of that you can penetrate into the higher domains of your consciousness in ways that are actually safe and productive. But generally speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll have to just know yourself and accept yourself. Doesn't mean you tolerate everything. Doesn't mean you don't have a desire, don't build a desire for transformation, change, and transcendence. But it means that you accept it, you don't resist it. So what I was going to say is that after practicing after building up your faith levels, what you'll see, and this is where I want you to get at this retreat, and maybe you already are, 
is that you begin to shift things much more rapidly and easily because, and let go of attachments when they arise, because of your faith levels, which enables you to quite instantly see at any given point that what you prefer is to simply give it all away rather than needing to find a reason as to why, say, the black hole is more preferable or why letting go of this or that is more beneficial. Instead of having to reason with yourself, you just know, you just surrender. You, you've, you've gotten a taste of what it's like to, to let God be, so to speak, to let things be up to God, not out of a victimizing sense. It's very empowering to do this. It shifts you into becoming something else entirely than just a human psyche, just by surrendering. After doing the surrender things multiple times, even if initially you need permission slips and understandings and reasoning, even if you're coming from the linear limited path, you will inevitably make the jump to the nonlinear and the infinite path of faith. Faith is the path of the infinite. Reason is the finite path. You, you can't figure this out you know, at some point. You have to let go of it making sense or it fitting inside of a human paradigm of values and morals and belief systems and what have you. All these dense ideas that we've been brought up with all because we lack an innate spontaneous understanding to begin with. Because we lack faith, we have law. Because we lack faith, we have morals. Because we lack faith, we have values. Those are all replacements. Those are stale, frozen versions of spontaneous wisdom. This is why you'll probably also be ridiculed, whether in small circles or publicly, is because this type of malleable wisdom, ice cannot understand water or steam. It just doesn't understand why it would ever move in those ways. And so the only thing it can do is judge it wrong doesn't fit into the current paradigm, we'll judge it as wrong and scary because we don't understand. And then we might think we understand from our frozen perspective of values and morals and belief systems. But we don't understand no matter how much we judge it. No matter how much we think we can label it from our present view, we just simply do not understand. Because we can't. The mind cannot understand nonlinear wisdom, nonlinear movement. And so, the higher your faith levels, the more immediate your integrity, the more automatic your love in each reflection, in each scenario. So build that faith. It's one of the most valuable tools and one of the most pervasive benefits. It's one of the benefits that pervades your life the most, many different ways.